Welcome to Nine's Wide World of Sports and to the highlights of the second final of the Benson Hedges World Series Cup. This one at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the first having been won by the West Indies on Wednesday evening in Sydney and won quite conclusively too, I might say. The West Indies won the toss and Clive Lloyd decided that they would bat, as indeed happened in the first final. We pick up play now in the fourth over. Desmond Haynes is taking strike with just one run on the board. Carl Rackerman is the bowler. Your commentator is Ian Chappell and with him is Frank Tyson. And Desmond Haynes off the mark with a very straight drive. And the ground particularly fast. But uh, running away from Rodney Hogg. I don't think Desmond Haynes timed it quite as he would like. But it absolutely raced to the boundary. West Indies scoring it just one per over. As Lawson and Rackerman do their job very well for Australia. Gabriel on one facing Rackerman. That's more like the Richard Gabriel we expect to see. Lofting one, two bounces and into the long on fence. That's out. Steve Smith takes the catch. Gabriel surprised there by a little bit of extra pace and bounce from Rackerman. Starting off for the smash down the ground and then was caught in mid straight. And there'll be a little sigh of relief out there because Gabriel who hasn't really played all that well this year, was beginning to look very dangerous. Tried to force there off the back foot, a little bit of bounce, and the ball lobbing up in the air to Steve Smith. That ball actually hit very high up on the blade, and Richard Gabriel, of 35 balls, is out for 19. The West Indies, one for 33. Gee, that's a good shot. He's a talented young player, this fellow. There's problems there for Australia. It looks to me as though Steve Smith has strained something. He's, he's not looking in very good shape at all to me. They might well have torn a muscle. And landed, it looked as though on the point of the elbow, almost certain to be a dislocation. And the really grave part of that is that the Australian team goes to the West Indies on Wednesday. What a cruel blow. Border to Haynes. Sweep and he's out. What a catch. What a great catch by Tom Hogan at backward square leg. He swept that ball and Hogan threw himself to his left and took one of the best catches you'll ever see. And what a pity, Bill. Our classic catches have already been set because that was a great catch by Tom Hogan. Beautifully swept by Desmond Haynes. He could consider himself a little unlucky to get out from this shot because he picked that one up beautifully and Hogan throwing himself to his left. A little lucky probably that it was his natural hand, his left hand, but just the same. What a great snare that was. A magnificent catch and Desmond Haynes out in the West Indies 2 for 54. 20 overs completed, 58 for 2. Sweeps and gets that. Racing out towards the boundary and that's four runs big for Maguire. Almost the exact position where Desmond Haynes was caught. That was in the air for some time. But the fieldsman this time forward a square leg. Great. Absolutely magnificent. Full stretch. The catch of a master. And after seeing that catch, it's hard to visualise what an Australian team would be like without Rodney Marsh. That was a magnificent catch by Rodney Marsh. Richardson going for the hook shot. Bit of glove, bit of bat there. And Marsh getting across to his left. He was there by himself. And flung out that left hand as we've seen so often an international cricketer. And he brought off a magnificent snare. So Richardson out. In the 31st over, the 43 court Marsh bowled Lawson. And the West Indies 3 for 116. Hogan to Lloyd. Well, it's a good shot. Beaten in the flight, but still recovered and cut it away fine of the man at point. Very, very fast down in that area and very little chance of cutting it off once it gets away from you. Clive Lloyd faces Kepler Vessels. In the air. Now, it's difficult. Oh, what an effort in the end. Rodney Hogg. 
I wouldn't have liked to have been under that, I can tell you. And I don't think Rodney Hogg was too keen about it either, but he got it at the second attempt. That was a very difficult catch. He swallows hard, but in the end, he grabbed it. I doubt whether Kepler Vessels could have said anything to him if he had put it down, but that had a lot of height to it. And Rodney Hogg getting underneath it and then having to go back at the last moment. Did come out for air for a moment. And then Hoggy just latching onto it with a couple of fingers. And he couldn't believe it. And what a relief, Rodney Hogg. A vital catch, that, because it's got rid of Clive Lloyd. He's a real problem for the Australians. Lloyd going for the big hit. Put Hogg, bold vessels for 11. And the West Indies, 4 for 137. Harry Gooms holds a bet very high for the short man. It's a nice deflection, that could be four. And very valuable runs. That didn't go where, was it, where it was intended. <laughs> Gomes going for the square cut there, a top edge, no slip in position. It's in the air and it brings up the 50 for Vivian Richards. Dropped the win seven today. Goes to 51 and hasn't let the big crowd down. He loves the Marvel cricket ground as Vivian Richards. Strokes on both sides of the wicket. And he's got time to go on and make a hundred here with 10 overs to go it's a big hit it's straight there's a man there he's under it and he's caught it Vessel's getting the extra over from Kim Hughes a surprise and it's Hogan again that man Hogan with a safe pair of hands and Vivian Richards falling for the trap hitting it straight down his throat at long arm it's absolutely remarkable how so many batsmen underestimate Kepler Vessels who bowls fairly straight compels the batsman to play straight as Richards does on this occasion the man specifically dropped back at long on for that chance. And once it went into those hands of Hogan, it was not going to get out. Absolutely safe as houses. So, exit Viv Richards, 5 for 173. Vessels to Dujon. It's in the air, it's safe. Border knocks it down, but knocks it into the gutter. Four runs to Jeffrey Dujon. Well, he's nicked it and it's gone fine down towards the third man boundary. Four runs, just a little lucky that one from Dujon. I think he was trying to hit it over the top of Midorf. He's hit that in the air and it's going down into the gap at mid wicket. Hogan's after it, he won't get there. That's another four to Dujon. That's two fours to him in this over. Well, that's straight down the ground. They're going for two. That's 222. The West Indies have scored 222. 4.4 to win this match now for Australia. Well, that was a tremendous effort by the Australians. They had setbacks there with Greg Ritchie injured early on, a knee injury that may well stop him batting. They had Steve Smith with that awful injury to his shoulder, a dislocation and torn ligaments as well. And uh, then, in the field, they had Kepler Vessels put down Vivian Richards when he'd made only seven. The West Indies scorecard, Haynes 18 and Gabriel 19. That was a good brisk partnership at the start. Richardson played very well for his 43, but suffered an ankle strain, which kept him off the field later on. Richards 59 from 70 balls, Lloyd out for 11, and Gomes and Dujon 25 and 33, respectively, added 49 in an unbeaten partnership from six overs. The bowling figures for Australia, Lawson one wicket, Rackerman one, Border one, and Vessels two. Now those injuries to Smith and Ritchie were quite problems for Kim Hughes. He had to send in Dean Jones to open the batting with Kepler Vessels. And we pick up play now in the sixth over. Joel Garner is bowling to Vessels, who's on six. Your commentators, Ian Chappell and Bill Lurry. Good shot from Vessels. Just opened the face of the bat. Guided it past Eldine Baptiste. Jones quickly back for the third. It's well run. Good running and good fielding, but a bit of pressure coming onto the West Indian team now. An anxious Clive Lloyd there looks at his field placings. Vessels worked that nicely. It's a good shot from Jones. They'll bring up the first boundary of the innings. Nice piece of timing. And he's gone. 
So the first blood to the West Indians, Dean Jones goes. Caught at the wicket by Geoffrey Dujon of Michael Holding. Holding has bowled so well in this series to date. Strikes for Clive Lloyd. With movement off the wicket as Jean Dean Jones there just tries an ambitious drive. The thinnest of outside edges, a small noise. And disappointed Dean Jones out for 12 as he went for that off drive. One for 23. Good shot. No ball call. And this outfield is fast today. No chance of Clive Lloyd catching that. Good shot from Kepler Vessels. It was. It was also a surprising stroke because Vessels hit that ball well off his legs. Richard Cabriel at deep point. Oh, and a misfield. And he really has had a very ordinary day out there in the outfield. And I bet Viv Richards is absolutely furious. Richards has got his hands on his hips. He's glaring down towards the square point area. And now he's taking disciplinary action. Well, that's amazing because Gus Logie, who had uh, three stitches in the split webbing in his hand, has come onto the field. And Kim Hughes is not too thrilled about it. He's having a chat to uh, Viv Richards. Desmond Haynes at deep point and Kepler Vessels has brought up his 50. He's having a pretty good match, Kepler Vessels. Taking wickets and scoring runs. Oh, that's out. Must be plumb that one. Michael Marshall gets shoes. Noel Johnson, the umpire. That couldn't have gone anywhere but middle stump about uh, halfway up, I should think. Beautiful piece of bowling ends a fine innings from Kim Hughes. Great fast bowler Malcolm Marshall. He got that to come back off the scene, but he was plumb. No doubt at all. He's forced back and across, straightened up, and would have took middle and leg stump. And umpire Mel Johnson had no hesitation whatsoever in ending a fine innings from the Australian captain. Tremendous ovation here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And Australia are now two for 132. That's good placement pick the wide open spaces of the offside Desmond Haynes with a desperate dive but the ball beats him and Australia are going to need a couple more of those good placement again from Kepler Vessels Roger Harper will do well to cut that one off once it gets on those practice wickets it fairly races into the boundary once again a lovely shot down onto the fast area of the ground it's been pretty fast all over but that area is quick High in the air and going to mid on. Fieldsman safely under it is Malcolm Marshall, and that is a very big blow to the West Indies and also an enormous blow to the Australian chances. A couple of vessels caught by Malcolm Marshall. There's vessels trying to lift that one over the infield, and getting right under the ball and hitting it high in the air. Easy catch for Malcolm Marshall. This is how it happened. Holding has been brought back into the attack. He got right underneath it, hit it high in the air. And uh, no problems here for Malcolm Marshall at all. Well, that was certainly a fine innings by Kepler Vessels. He set the stage here for Australian victory. Up for 77 of 109 balls. Caught by Marshall for bowling of holding. Australia, 3 for 161. And an edge. And well taken there by Geoffrey Dujon. Marvellous catch moving away to his right. And uh, that ball wasn't far off the ground when he took it. Tremendous effort from the West Indies keeper. Yes, Dujon having to move away to his right there to, to make that catch. Richie went driving at the ball just outside of stump. And uh, it stayed down as well. And Dujon catching it just above the surface. So another wicket to a wicket to... Joel Garner, Richie out for four, and Australia now four for 169. Rod Marsh has been one of Australia's most consistent players in this series so far. Batting very well, and he'll get an extra run for the Desmond Haynes misfield. It'll be close, but Marsh just beats the return home. 
It's in the air. Two John's a man calling for it. He's got the cap off. He's taking his time. He's got it. And Border is out. And that's a vital breakthrough. Border out of form, trying to hit down the ground. And look at the West Indians. They're delighted. Well, we saw a mishap occur over in Perth last weekend when Kim Hughes going for a big hit. Played a similar shot to that. The ball ballooning up into the air. And Jeffrey Dujon missing the catch. But on this occasion, that was not to be the case. Border up and under and Jeffrey Dujon good judgment by him he called it early flipped off the cap and into the safe gloves of Jeffrey Dujon an elated keeper too no doubt that wicket of last Sunday would have still been in his mind so a vital wicket great breakthrough for the West Indies and now Australia struggling a little at five for 176 Oh, he misses that through the hands of Augustine Logie. The substitute is racing out on the wicket. It'll go. Gomes in pursuit, but that's gone. What a breakthrough. A misfield at a crucial crisis point of this game. Bowling. Dear, oh dear. Marsh with 16 runs off 12 balls. Tried to put him over mid-wicket. And Joel Garner, too straight, too consistent. Bowled the fucky wicketkeeper. Big Joel never far away from those stumps. Wasn't impressed with that previous misfield. On that occasion, just a little bit shorter to Rodney Marsh. Kept the ball up to him a little bit further for the greater part of this over. And that ends the innings of Rodney Marsh. And who knows, it may be his last appearance on the international arena for Australia. Did his best today. And the big bird, Joel Garner, putting an end to the innings of Rodney Marsh. Standing ovation from the crowd at the MCG. Good shot, that beats Logan, that could be four. Graham's coming around, that is four. Real beauty, Jeff Lawson, the crowd rise to their feet. Hogan on strike. Swing, it could be out. Logie's caught him. Straight to Logie at mid-wicket, and that was a vital one. Held that catch. Holding too fast, too straight for Tom Hogan. It's not only the fact that he's out, Bill, but that's one less ball now that the Australians to score from. Hogan taking the risk, did the right thing, tried to pick it up, just hit it on the bottom of the bat and didn't hit it as well as he would have liked. And Gus Logie at mid-wicket taking a nice, easy catch. So Australia now, 7 for 209. Tom Hogan on the way back to the pavilion. And he gets it. Gets it wide. That's four. It's racing out towards the boundary. That's desperate runs for Australia. Well played, Jeffrey Lawson. The big man went for the Yorker. It was wide. Jeff Lawson put back the ball and it raced away. Take your time, Jeffrey Lawson. Six runs, four balls. The challenge now down a little. The pressure is enormous on the batsman. In the air, it's safe. Haynes the first one. Will they go for two? They go. The throw's coming in. It's the bowler's end. Close, he's out. A great return from Desmond Haynes. What a great return. So only one run from that shot. Not the two as Hoggers run out, but still a run. The wicket unimportant at this stage with Lawson still on strike. Rodney Hogg very slow there, Bill, between the stumps. In fact, I think that he may have thought it was going to be thrown at the other end. And what a beautiful return from Desmond Haynes and a great take by Joel Garner getting it down to those stumps and removing the bales like lightning and Rodney Hogg struggling to get his back down so the players now just telling Joel just take your time settle down he hits it it could be four it's going out Wilson Davis the fieldsman fields three runs oh what a finish Two for a win. And two balls remaining, Bill. So now the pressure comes on to Viv Richards because all Australia have got to do is make contact and run through for that quick single. What a finish to this game. And full credit to Jeffrey Lawson, showing a lot of cricket intelligence. Even came down then, had a chat to Rackerman. Suddenly the pressure is not only on the West Indies outfield, but it suddenly comes onto the infield too. Yes! That's it. Beauty. One run to win. 
Viv Richards out there generaling his troops and he's bringing them all in. He knows the situation of the game now. Australia, one run. They come in from the outfield. They're coming from everywhere. Richards putting the pressure on. Just one ball. The last thing that Viv Richards would want to do, and no doubt he's told Joel Garner, don't bowl a wide, don't bowl a no ball. That's the first thing that the West Indies have to do. Look at that field around Lawson. He's surrounded. Carl Rackerman, back up, son. Now run for anything as Joel Garner comes in. The crowd are all standing here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Bounce is run out and the West Indies win. What an end to a magnificent final. A tie, so the West Indies win the Benson Hedges World Series Cup. Scores are level. The scorecard of the Australians in their innings needing 223 to win. They finished up with 222 for nine. Vessel splendid for his 77 in 109 balls faced. And Hughes played a great innings of 53 from 89 deliveries. Lawson at the end hit beautifully for 21 in 19 balls faced. Nine for 222. The bowling figures for the West Indies, I thought holding was magnificent today. 10 overs, three for 39. Garner finished with the same figures, but was slightly offline today. Marshall, one for 27, was superb. And what about that throw that ran out Rodney Hogg? The other bowlers for the West Indies, Marshall, he had one for 27. Richards, none for 26. Gomes, none for 37. And Baptiste, no wicket for 44.